All right, what we have on the bench here today is a little receiver, a little old uh, Technics receiver. It's a model SH-206. And I'm looking at it for somebody. He asked me if I could take a peek at it because I guess the last time he used it, uh, he hooked up a speaker and then apparently it smoked. Um, usually when that happens, uh, immediately in my, clicks in my mind is you have a channel that has met rail. Uh, what I mean by that is in one channel is met rail voltage. You probably have a positive and negative swing of a voltage that your signal uh, is produced on. And when you have an output that shorts, uh, either negative or positive, then the output of the receiver will tend to just be high or low. And unfortunately, what happens is if you have a speaker hooked up to it, uh, it meets its demise pretty quickly. Uh, it'll either extend the, the uh, speaker or pull in the woofer until it uh, self-destructs. Now, I've already pulled the cover off here and uh, just basically hooked some test gear up to confirm my suspicion and I'll show you how I got to that point. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to see if uh, what we suspect is wrong with this is truly wrong with this and what we can do about it if we can fix this. I cannot find a service manual on this so I guess this is going to be called substitution repair. Um, what, that, what I mean by that is if, if you have a part or a suspected part that you think is damaged you try and replace it and sometimes that's all you can do with some of these old uh, receivers especially this one that has an integrated amplifier IC chip it does not have separate MOSFETs or, or, or bipolar junction transistor outputs, nothing. It's it's just one massive chip for the output. So if you have one channel that dies in this receiver, you have to change the whole unit. And I will show you that. You'll see that right here is an STK4833 stereo amplifier I see right down there. And I suspect that that has gone bad. And um, I'm going to confirm that. Uh, I'll show you how I get to that point but um, alright so let's get to the test equipment I have a signal generator here ready to go and I have it set up at 1 kilohertz and I got about 620 millivolts going to be the input of the receiver on both stereo channels left and right and I have the stereo knob about 80 to 90 percent up and I want to see the rails hit voltage um, of its maximum peak, top and bottom, with a sine wave of 1 kilohertz. And let's see what happens. Right now I have this scope set up so that you can see both channels, but one is behind the other, so you really can't see both at the, at the moment. But you will see when I turn this on what happens. All right, let's turn the channel 1 on. So right now I'm feeding in a kilohertz signal into the receiver. The receiver is powered off. I'm going to turn the receiver on and let's see what we find. Well, immediately one channel went to DC and the other channel is working fine. Now you see how that one channel here is at the top of DC. So what happened is this is your right now I have the stereo max output and this is the actual plus and minus waveform that is generating on the good channel and when you have a bad channel it just shorts out to one side and that is what causes your speaker to destruct alright so let's turn this off before we cause any more damage and see it collapsing back down to zero so uh, I've done some testing on this transistor well not transistor but many transistors it is an integrated amplifier IC and I have come to the conclusion that there is a shorter channel in it I have measured a few of the pins and uh, I have found that there is a few shorts in there so we are going to replace it with a brand new one and we'll see how that works out so it's time to flip this bad boy upside down and start unsoldering and get the thing swapped out because I've tested all these other components around here and everything seems fine but I'm going to check them again once I pull this IC out and make sure there's nothing else wrong 
But without a service manual, it's really hard to tell. But I mean, you can just probe or use suspected parts. And for the price of this, I think it was ten bucks. Ten bucks. It's worth throwing ten dollars on an amplifier to see if it will come back to life and live another day. All right, so I'm going to turn it upside down and start to doing some unsoldering and and get that thing out of there. All right, so what we're basically going to do is just unsolder these pens to the uh, integrated amplifier I see. Piece of cake. So that's all set. Now I was like, all I have to do is undo that screw, and that that uh, integrated amp should fall right out. All right, let's get this puppy out of here. This one's at a bad angle. I think we might need a stubby to get this one. Oh, she's coming. Move that out of the way. So now we just have to wiggle this thing off the heat sink because I'm sure it's pretty much glued on there with that heat sink gunk. Uh, oh, there we go. Just comes right out. And that's it. So we'll have to, we're going to check this part, make sure the short's still there and it's not on the board. And we'll clean all this up and we'll change out the IC. All right, so on the left I have, or it might be your right, but uh, I have the old one, and over on this side I have the new one. And I'm just gonna go along these pins and see if I can find a short. Whoop, right there. So we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So five and eight dead short. Let's go over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No short. Well, that's, uh, that's encouraging. So, uh, it looks like this thing might work after all. So, I'm going to check a few components on the board and now I'm just going to pop this thing in and we'll, we'll see what, we'll see what it's going to do. All right, we got that crud cleaned off the heat sink. And so we're going to Put some new compound on the part. And I have to get some more of this. All right. So smear it around a little bit. Sure you cover all the corners in the surface area. You don't want to put too much on, just a thin film will do. So it kind of looks like that. Oh, so I bring a napkin in here. Sometimes if you add too much of this stuff, it actually will not trans. Uh, transfer the heat as good as it you would think it would. Alright. So 
So you want to get it on there, and you want to press it and wiggle it. That's going to seed it up against the heat sink. Let that compound really compress around. It almost created its own vacuum on the heat sink. And uh, if you uh, feel that you're, you didn't put enough on, you could always take it off and check. But I mean, I've done been doing this for a long time, so I mean, I know that's enough. And you can actually, it's nice and stuck on there, so that's a good sign. So we're just gonna pop these screws back in. Try to find the original holes. Start them by hand. Always start them by hand. As you're going into a aluminum most of the time, and if you you don't start these by hand, you can tend to cross thread these screws into the hole and it'll create a whole another problem. Alright, so I'm just gonna torque those down and uh, we'll flip it over and resolder everything. All right, so now we're going to resolder these this IC back up. Good, good, good. All right, let's clean up the flux. A little bit of alcohol on my toothbrush. Oh, I don't have, uh, I don't have my right tool here, so I'm just dabbing this on here. Let's see. Shorts looks good. Let's look at it under the eye loop. No shorts, no cold solder joints, it all looks good. All right, so I guess it's time for a test. I'll clean that up a little bit better on it. All right, let's test it out. All right, so the moment of truth is here. Let's try it out and see what we get. Ooh, I see one sine wave. Uh, I bet you the other one's hiding behind that. Let's see. Yep, she's back there. So if I turn down the balance on one, Oh, a little bit of scratchy pot there. Yep, that's one. That's balancing to the left. This is balancing to the right. That looks good. Besides the scratchiness in the pot. But we have both signals once again. So there we go. We fixed this amplifier. So, next thing to do is throw a load on it and uh, let it run for a while. So I'm going to try that next. Alright, so I got two 8 ohm loads hooked up to the uh, output to the receiver. And I got both my signals, left and right channel. And let's try the fade again. That's good. That's good. I'm still going to clean those pots, but that yeah, should be okay. So uh, we're looking good here. These things are getting a little toasty. So she's working. 
and those are only rated for about 100 watts so and they're not on a heat sink other than themselves so I can't run them too long but wow they're getting nice and warm wow all right so I'm gonna turn it down to a minimum volume and uh, let it run at idle for a bit and see how it works but other than that I think this is good it's a win hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching